So I've decided to train up my farming skill. I'm currently only 41 farming, um, and I do want to get that 47 farming so I can get uh, watermelons. I believe it's 47. There it is there. Um, but to, firstly, to get to watermelons, I need to do, uh, I guess, some allotments and some quests and things like that. So the current plan is to make some scarecrows and then um, plant those scarecrows in those flower patches. Uh, which then protects the, I guess, protects the sweet corns from disease, and that's the current plan. So, um, to make the, um, what are they called? To make these scarecrows, you need a bronze spear, an empty sack, and a watermelon. Um, and now, to get my hands on the bronze spear, I'm going to go do some barbarian training, and then that grants me the um, ability to make those bronze spears. So, I guess I need to do the Tai Bo 10 Trio um, quest. The, what is it? Tie boy want a trio quest, and once I've done that, I'm gonna make my bronze spears. So lately, all I've been doing is basically just AFKing at these uh, yaks at Natiznot, basically, basically just training my range up to get to 70. And you know, right on cue, there it is, there's 70 range, and that allows me basically to use the Carol's crossbow, uh, black D hide, and um, mainly Barrow's gear for when I get 70 defense as well. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I may just continue range. Um, just AFKing here with some iron knives because what I've what I've been doing is I basically bought a lot of iron ore and then I then smith that iron ore into the iron bars with the ring of forging and then uh, basically smithed uh, my iron knives out of that because it was very very expensive to buy iron knives just by themselves so I decided just to go and buy a lot of iron ore and then make them myself just to save me quite a bit of money because at this stage um, especially only level 85 combat. Uh, money isn't something that I can accumulate very, very easily. That is basically going to come later on when I'm maybe 80 or 85 range and, you know, 85 to 90 attack and strength and that sort of stuff with the uh, highest... Um higher prayer level as well, and I'm mainly just going for God Wars, so I'm trying to get enough uh, skills and stats to so I can do the Sidonian and God Wars, and that's probably going to be 85 range minimum. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get to 80 or 85 range. I may just continue using knives because the experience per hour here is quite decent. I would say it's between 50 and 60k experience per hour. Um, it depends how much you pay attention and things like that, but I really do like training range here. Uh, it just depends on how many iron knives I have left in the bank and how many iron knives um, you know, I'm willing to throw at these guys. Uh, now, I need to do some Slayer. I'm probably going to finish up at maybe 60 Slayer or something like that because the main goal of this account is to do a high tier PVM and that's basically it. Uh, 99s really aren't on, on the agenda for me. The only 99s that would be on the agenda would be uh, attack strength, just mainly the combat. So, if I was to get... Um, you know, a few 99s, they would all be in the uh, the combat stats. But, you know, I've sort of had my days where I've just, you know, grind or ground, I guess, grinded, ground. I don't quite know what the uh, the term is there. Um, but I have, you know, I've done a lot of grinding in my day on RS3. And, you know, the I reckon the point of this game is basically just to train your stats up and then use those stats rather than just train your stats up just for tra the heck of training your stats up. Um, so, you know, that's my current goal now. Just trying to get my stats up reasonably high so I can do some high tip PVM. Um, you know, which is uh, God Wars and some good Barrows. Now, Barrows you don't really need high stats for, um, but if you want to do it effectively and efficiently, you do need uh, half-decent stats. So I'm working on that right now, and um, yeah, that's sort of, the, I guess, the sort of plan and what I've been up to. So I decided to use all the Dragon Modes I gained from doing Slayer just to use on Prayer. And there we go, there's 52 Prayer, so when I go into the Wildy, I'll be able to smite some kids for the AGSs, so how cool is that? And that'll also help with, uh, obviously, the fight caves. Just give me that two, because uh, I was 49 when I started training this prayer, um, and now 52. So I'll give those extra three prayer, there's three prayer points, and um, I've got about 80 bones in the bank, but I don't want to mess up the 52 prayer. Um, if I'm going to get another prayer level, it'll be like 55 or like 60 or something like that, just a nice even number, because, uh, you know, no one really likes the odd numbers, because they just look a little bit odd, if you know what I'm saying. So I need, uh, I believe it is 67 points until I can unlock the ability to make my Slayer Mask. Now, I'm not quite sure if this task will get me, and like, obviously the 70 or 75 Slayer points. Hopefully it will, uh, but I have a feeling it won't get me that many points. This is my 20th task, and I'm not quite sure how many points you get every 10th task, um, obviously when I'm level 20. So after this Dagonoth, I will find out, because as you see, using the OS Buddy Pro Client, I've got the Dagonoth counter here on my Slayer, so I don't even need to bring my Slayer Gem. And I got 60 points, which means I need 7 more points until I can unlock the ability to use the Slayer Mask. Yeah, it's the Slayer Mask. Um, and it's a little bit disappointing that I've still got to do one more task until I can actually unlock that. Um, but once I do have that unlocked, it will just look 
I guess it just looks a lot nicer, a lot, a lot more professional than the Slayer uh, or the, than the Black Mask. And it's obviously a lot more useful, so, you know, good times. And just to make sure I'm seven off, let's have a little look. Oh, we're actually four off, so it's a bit of a... Um, oh, so very, very, very close. Four points off until I can unlock the Malevolent Masquerade um, perk, I guess you can call it, in the reward shop. So I thought I was... I thought I was seven off, but apparently I'm only four off. So there we go. So I've just finished my basilisk task. Basilisks. I don't even know how to pronounce that. But I did manage to get myself quite a lot of herbs. But the most important thing about that task was definitely the uh, getting enough points to get the unlock the ability to use the malevolent masquerade. I guess little perk of the Slayer store. So there we go. 408 reward points. Uh, so I'm gonna quickly buy this now. Hopefully this is the right one. Yep, Malevolent Masquerade. There we go. Confirm that. And that's ticked off. So hopefully, if I take off my Black Mask now, I've also got all of these uh, things in my inventory. I believe this is everything you need, which is the ear muffs, the face mask, the nose peg, the spiny helmet, the enchanted gem, and the Black Mask. So if I use them on each other, I need 55 crafting to use these things. So I... Um, that's uh, kind of awkward. So I try to do as many herb runs as I can, because on average I make about 100k GP from every herb run that I do. And I'm growing runners, uh, so I obviously get the runner seeds, and then when you grow the herbs, they turn into the runner herbs, which is, uh, you know, it's a given. But um, these are very, very good money. Generally, you'll buy the runner seeds for about 22 to 25k. And then you'll be able to sell the uh, the runner weeds for about 6.5k a piece. Um, you know, that's just, they're just very, very general sort of figures. But um, on average, you should be able to sell them for that much. Now, if, you know, if maybe four or five of my patches survive, depending on, obviously, the, the yield that you get, um, you will make about 100, like 80 to 100k profit uh, every single run. Every now and again, you will get maybe three or four herbs that die at once, and you will be getting unlucky. But if you do buy... Uh, quite a fair few Ranar seeds. On the whole, you'll be making quite a bit of money. And you also get, if you're a lower level like me with the farming, so I'm only 44 farming, um, all I've really been doing to get farming XP is uh, just, you know, just farm runs, like herb runs. Like, I don't use allotments just yet because I'm trying to get my hands on some watermelons so I can use my... Um, the empty sacks with the watermelons, as well as those bronze spears that I picked up from the Dagonoth task. I'm not sure if I showed you guys that, but um, when I was killing the Dagonoths, I did manage to pick up myself a few of, you know, a few of the bronze spears, so I don't have to complete the Taibo Wano Trio, whatever. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that quest, but um, I don't have to complete that quest anymore. Um, I may do it in the future, but the main goal of completing, like the main reason I was complete, uh, the main reason I was going to complete that quest was basically just to unlock the ability to use. Uh, well, I guess Smith um, spears, like bronze spears, and the reason I'm smithing bronze, the reason I want to smith bronze spears, or the reason I did want to smith bronze spears, was just because you can use those with obviously, yeah, like I said, the watermelon, the empty sack, and you put the spear in there as well, and that creates a scarecrow. And whenever you um, plant your sweet corn seeds, just to get myself a little bit more farming XP every time I do a farm run, uh, it it prevents it from disease. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's what it does. But yeah, so you just have to chuck a scarecrow in the flower patch of the farming allotment, and then your sweet corns will be all good to go. But at the same time, you do want to be using super compost, and there we go, one of my herbs died, but that's alright, I'm still making quite a bit of money from this. Um, but as I was saying, if you've got your scarecrow in the middle, um, obviously your patches will survive, your um, sweet corn patches will survive. Uh, but if you use super compost, I'm sure you guys know this already, but I thought I might just say it anyway, um, you do get a better chance of getting quite a bit more yield. Um, so, you know, instead of getting, let's say, for example, seven sweet corn, you get like, I don't know, 12 or something like that. I'm not quite sure of the figures about that one. But you do get a significant amount more. So that's always good, um, just to use super compost as well. But yeah, tips, uh, I guess, farming with uh, Sean. And easily, the best way to get super compost is to head, make your way over to Catherby and on this port here. All you got to do is come to these guys, the trade, I uh, just trade with the trader crew members and just um, buy all the pineapples you can if you're using OS Buddy which is a very very good idea all you got to do is double click on the world on the side here and if I just double click let's say 3335 it just logs me in automatically I'm going to show you hopefully quickly there we go um, so I've got to readjust this camera now. Um, but yeah, all you got to do is keep trading these guys and buy as many pineapples as you can. Normally there's a stock of 15, so hopefully I can get that on video for you guys. Um, hopefully, 
So uh, I think I'm pretty sure there's quite a few people doing this method. Um, but you know, this is the this, this is the best way when there aren't many people doing it uh, to get your hands on as many pineapples as possible. And there we go. There's a yield of 15 pineapples, which is always awesome. And once you've done this, I recommend only using two of the compost bins. My two preferred ones are the one um, just north of where I am now, just the Catherby one. And the second one is with the Ectophile Port Phasmatis. Now, I don't use the... Um, I don't use the Ardone one, and I don't use the um, the one north of Draenor and south of Falador because it just takes too long to get there from the bank. And with these two, you only really need a maximum of uh, two compost bins because you do manage to get 30 um, if you use two, so you get 15 each one. So you just need to get 15 pineapples, chuck them in the compost bin, and then close the bin lid. And once you've done that, it takes about an hour and a half. I'm pretty sure it takes about an hour and a half. Once you can do that, just get your 15 buckets, come back here, and then um, just, I guess, get all your super compost. Now, it's definitely not... Not worth buying super compost because it is so cheap and so easy to get um, and if you just do the method that I'm showing you guys now um, it's definitely the best way and just to uh, just to reiterate I do recommend only using two compost bins at a time um, if you if you're feeling very very am ambitious you can run around to four or even I guess five uh, different compost bins in the, I'm, I'm not sure if there are five actually I'm not sure if there's one at the Trollheim as well um, but you know I recommend only using two like you can go and use the Ardone one um, and you can go and use their Falador one, but you know, just for banking sake and just for sanity's sake, I do recommend only using the Port Phasmatis because you can use the Ectophile as well as the one north of Cathaby because you can just teleport to Cathaby with 55 magic and then run a little bit east and you're you know you're already at the allotment. So I recommend only using those two um, two compost bins.